discussed his experience leading the country through two of the greatest public health crises of our time, HIV AIDS and COVID-19. Tonight, more on his fraught relationship with former President Trump, the partisan attacks he faced that turned into real threats, and how he views his own legacy after a nearly six-decade career. All of it captured in his new memoir, On Call, A Doctor's Journey in Public Service. What was your relationship behind the scenes with President Trump like? Well, you know, I described it in, in, in some detail in the book. It was really, it was complicated because when we first met, we had a, a real good rapport with us. You know, I, I describe it, maybe it was sort of, you know, a guy raised in Queens and a guy raised in Brooklyn. We had a, that similar New York swagger, whatever you wanted to call it, that we related to each other. And in the beginning, he actually listened to what we were saying and went along with it. But when it became clear that the virus was not going to disappear and it was not going to peak in February and go away in March and April the way the flu does. And as we got into the season of preparing for the election, then we started to go separately because that's when I had a contradict him, which was painful for me to do that. You know, the, the people in the White House staff thought I was doing that because I wanted to get out. I, not at all. It was not comfortable for me to do that. But that's when it went from, hey, we're buddy buddies to, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's wrong most of the time and those kinds of things. So it started off of actually quite a buzz with Deborah Burks, too. I mean, she would say something and maybe not the last word. And that's what happened when Scott Atlas came into the White House and he would undermine some of the things that Deb Burks and I were trying to tell him. The attacks on you, the rhetorical attacks on you actually led to, to real threats in one case in August of 2020, you're opening your mail and this white powder just explodes all over you, your face, your chest. It turned out that the, the powder was not dangerous, still a harrowing experience. After that, you went back to work. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would have forgiven you if you said, you know what, this is too much. Uh, I've served this nation well, I'm done. But why did you go back? Why did you continue to oh, I did continue on no, the job? There was no question that I would go back because this was... I mean, this is what I do. I mean, I'm a physician, I'm a scientist. I've devoted my entire professional career to fighting outbreaks of infectious disease. There wasn't a chance in the world. I mean, they could have had somebody come in with a gun and point that I mean, I still would have gone to work the next day. You never thought about quitting? No. How'd your family feel about that? My wife, Christine Grady, Dr. Grady, is incredibly supportive of me. There were times when she would bring up the question, is this what you really want to do? And I would say, you know, Chris, yes, I do. And once I did that, she was 100% supportive. Reflecting on the, the pandemic, the, the partisan policy responses, the misinformation, the disinformation, it raises the real question of whether Americans will listen to federal public health officials and the guidance that they provide the next time a major epidemic rolls around. How, how do you see it? I'm very concerned. I mean, deeply concerned about what misinformation and disinformation and because right now we have what I've called and have written about as the normalization of untruths. There's so much false information and untruths out there that after a while people shrug their shoulders and say, well, we don't know what's true. And once you have a doubt as to what's true or not, science, which is based on the truth and data and evidence, all of a sudden you stop trusting the scientific process and science. And that's really dangerous. How do you respond to the accusations that mixed messaging from public health officials to include yourself added to the confusion during the pandemic and added to some of the lack of trust? You know, I think to be perfectly honest and humble about it, there was some mixed and perhaps gobbled message that came out. It came out, I know, the CDC even admitted that there were times when the message was gobbled for the man and woman in the street. You say in the book that um, you wanted to reflect on what it means to devote one's life to public service. Perfect world where there's no conflict. Uh, it's hard work, long hours, but very, very gratifying. And the rewards that you get personally of seeing what you can do, saving lives, making people feel more safe, is, is makes up for all the 16 and 18 hour days. When you throw into that, the complication of the divisiveness that we had to face, that makes it much, much more stressful because it's tough enough and the gratification is there 
But when you have what I and my colleagues, I'm not alone, had to go through, that's tough. And I hope that that's not a disincentive for people to want to go into science, medicine, public health, and public service. But I keep saying, and I'm honest about it, the truth, is that the gratification that you can get from saving lives and, and, and protecting the health of the American public is overwhelmingly in the balance of risk benefit. The benefit is way out there. Is that what you would tell young people who want to follow in your footsteps? I do, I do, because they do ask me now frequently, now Dr. Fauci, if you were in my shoes, you know, back then, would you do this now knowing what you knew? And I tell them absolutely 100% I would do it again. The process of putting together a memoir like this, I imagine you think a lot about your impact, um, how you want to be remembered, your legacy. What do you want people to, to take away from your life and your contributions to this country? You know, I, I think it's simple. I think when you talk about legacy, to me, legacy are for other people to evaluate years from now or maybe a year or two or maybe 10 years from now. What I would like people to know if they ask me, what do you want me to know about you, is that Without a doubt, I gave it 100%, 110% every day, you know, and to use a metaphor from sports, I left it all out on the court every day. And that's what I want to be remembered for. Whether you think I did well or how good I was or what my, that's what I did every day. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the book is On Call, A Doctor's Journey in Public Service. Thanks so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.